Think it could mean. Oh, hello everyone. I am Paula, and these are my friends Chucky and Billy. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, Tim. Hi, Calc. What are you guys doing? We're trying to figure out what this piece of paper is trying to tell us. We found it lying on the table when we came into the playroom. Oh, it has one, two, two pictures on it. What do they mean? Does this one look like a treasure chest? You're right, Billy. It is a treasure chest. And this one looks like an island. That does look like an island, Tim. Maybe they are trying to tell us something. Maybe they are symbols. What's a symbol, Paula? A symbol is a picture that means something. We can use symbols instead of words to tell people certain things. So, what do these symbols mean? Hmm, a picture of a treasure and a picture of an island. Treasure, treasure island. island! Maybe Captain Redbeard needs our help. That's it! Good thinking, Tim. Let's go to Treasure Island! That sounds like Captain Redbeard. It's coming from here. Let's go. Yar, that useless bag of feathers. Should have locked him in a cage when I had the chance. Hello, Captain Redbeard. Yar, what took you so long? We were trying to figure out the sea. Yeah, yeah. Look here. Tell me what this treasure map says. Normally, Parrot helps me with treasure maps, but Parrot is missing. Parrot's missing? Oh no, poor Parrot. Poor Parrot? Poor me! Now I have no one to help me find this treasure. Hey, what's that over there? Good eye, Billy. It looks like an envelope. Oh, it's a red feather. Paula, that red feather could be a symbol for Parrot, since Parrot has red feathers. You're right, Tim. Maybe this envelope is from Parrot. Let's open it, Paula. Hey, you're supposed to help me find my treasure. But Captain Redbeard, your friend is missing. Don't you want to know where Parrot is? I, uh, want to know where my treasure is. Oh. It looks like a map with symbols. Maybe it'll lead us to Parrot. Then let's follow this map. But, but my treasure. Captain Redbeard, I think it's more important that we find Parrot. Yeah, he's our friend. Fine, fine. 
So, what did we learn? We found a piece of paper with symbols that brought us to Treasure Island. We then discovered that Carrot has gone missing and that Captain Redbeard has no one to help him find his treasure. You know what we should do now? Look for Redbeard's treasure or find our friend Parrot. That's right! We should find our friend Parrot because friends are much more important than finding treasure. Hmm, there seem to be two paths here. Which one should we take? I'm not sure, Tim. Let's have a look at the map. Here is a group of circles, and here is a group of stars. And here is an arrow. But what does it mean? The stars on the map look a lot like the palm trees over there, Paula. Oh, that's right, Billy. And the circles on the map look like those trees over there. The stars are a symbol of the palm trees, and the circles are a symbol for the other trees. And the arrow pointing at the circles is a symbol telling us to go this way. Woohoo! Come on, everybody. Let's count the stones and hop with me. One, two, three, four. So where is that foolish bird? There he is! We found Parrot! Come down here, you silly bird! Squawk, silly bird! Now get down, squawk! Hmm, it seems Parrot doesn't want to come down. Maybe you should try to be a bit nicer, Captain Redbeard. Why don't you feed him some raspberries from that bush? Here you go, Captain Redbeard. Parrot might like them. Come down here, you silly bird. Squawk. Maybe your words are the reason why Parrot left you in the first place, Captain Redbeard. Why don't you try to be a bit nicer? Nice? I don't know how to be nice. That's okay, Captain Redbeard. We can show you. <laughs> This is how you make up to a friend. Step one, say something sweet. Step two, offer something nice to eat. Step three, say sorry and hug. That's it, this is how you make up with a friend. Come on, Captain Redbeard. Let's follow Paula's example to get Parrot down. Ready? Step one. Say something sweet. Err, uh, you are a smart bird. Squawk. That's great. Step two, offer something nice to eat. Uh, here, uh, have some nice berries. Squawk. You're doing great, Captain Redbeard. And step three, say you're sorry and hug. Er, uh, sorry? Squawk. Good job, Captain Redbeard. You managed to get your friend down by being nice. Ah, yes, I see. Parrot always needs to know that he is loved. If you keep it up, he'll never fly away. Ah, treasure! We can look for my treasure now. Yar! So long, mateys! Wait, where are you? Yar! Come back, bird! <laughs> Remember to be nice, Captain Redbeard. We found Parrot, Paula. That's right, Billy. Which means we have successfully completed our mission, and we did it with your help at home.
Today, we learned how symbols have meanings. We made use of the symbols to find our friend Parrot. We also found out that it's important to be nice to your friends. Here, guys, I saved you some raspberries. Thanks, Tim. That's so nice. Thanks, Tim. Arg, mateys. <laughs> Do join us on our next adventure. Hi, everyone. I am Paula. And these are my friends Chucky and Billy. Hello. And my friends Tim and Calc. Hi, everybody. <sighs> What's wrong, Tim? I want a cookie, but there are no more left. What took the last cookie from the cookie jar? Hmm. I think the question should be who took the last cookie from the cookie jar, Tim? Ah, oh, well, it doesn't matter anyway if the cookie's gone. What was that? It came from the jar. It's a gold coin. That face looks like Mr. Totem Head. We should ask him about this coin. Maybe he knows what happened to the last cookie, too. Okay, Tim. That sounds like a plan. Let's go to the jungle. <laughs> Children? Hello, Mr. Totem Head. Did you leave this gold coin in our cookie jar? Oh, yes, I did. I went to look for you, and then I got hungry. That coin is for the cookie I ate. Oh, so it was you who took our last cookie. Well, I can give you some banana cookies if you help me solve a mystery. Oh, a mystery. That sounds fun, Mr. Totem Head. My entire basket of bananas is gone. And now I'm trying to find it. Oh, dear. Here are some monkeys that can answer questions about the mystery. It's just that I don't know the right questions to ask them. Let's see. There are one, two, three monkeys. Hello, Mr. Monkeys. How are you? Um, the monkeys aren't saying anything. These monkeys can only answer certain types of questions. Monkey One only answers questions that start with where. Monkey Two only answers questions that start with when. And Monkey 3 answers questions that start with what? I see. So this is the monkey that only answers when questions. Mr. Monkey, when did Mr. Totem Head keep the basket of bananas? Hmm. Yesterday. Yesterday? That doesn't sound right. Well, it's correct. I still had the basket with bananas yesterday. What were you trying to ask, Tim? I just wanted to ask about the place where Mr. Totem had kept his bananas. Tim, I think the correct word to use when asking about a place is where. So this isn't the right monkey to ask. You use when if you want to ask about things related to time. Right, Paula? That's right, Billy. I see. So if I want to ask about a place, I need to use the word where. Mr. Monkey, where did Mr. Totem Head keep his bananas? Follow me. I'll show you. It worked. So what did we learn? Mr. Totem Head asked us to help him find his basket of bananas. Now we need to ask the right questions to three very special monkeys. 
Do you know what Tim should ask if he wants to know about a place? Should he ask this question? When did Mr. Totem Head keep his basket of bananas? Or should he ask this question? Where did Mr. Totem Head keep his basket of bananas? That's right. We use where if we want to ask questions about a place. The basket of bananas was here, right behind this wall. Thank you, Mr. Monkey. Now that we're here, let's search for clues. What are clues, Tim? Clues are signs that'll help us solve the mystery of the missing bananas. Like this broken bit of wall? Yes, and these snapped vines and broken trees. Something must have made its way through here. Look! There are big footprints in the ground. They are round, like Mr. Totem Heads. Really? Hmm, they look different. So I guess it wasn't Mr. Totem Head. Hey, Chalky and Count found some banana peels over here. Let's ask monkey number three about the clues. He answers questions that start with what? Um, what so could have made those left a trail of banana peels there? What's wrong, Mr. Monkey? Did we not ask the right questions? I'm sure we did. I think it was how you asked the questions. You need to ask questions properly. This is how you ask questions properly. Step one. Think about the right question to ask. Step two, don't ask questions at the same time. Step three, give the person enough time to answer each question. That's it. This is how you ask questions. Let's follow Mr. Totem Head's instructions to ask questions properly. Step one, think about the right question to ask. Hmm, I wanted to ask about the prince. So what could have made the prince? It might be the same thing that left the banana peels there. I wanted to ask about that. Mr. Mr. Monkey. Monkey. Oops, step two, don't ask questions at the same time. You go and ask Mr. Monkey first, Paula. Thanks, Tim. Mr. Monkey, what could have made these prints? It must have been something big and heavy. And what about that wall, Mr. Monkey? What could have cracked it? Hmm, it must have been something really strong with a big body. What left the trail of banana peels, Mr. Monkey? Hmm. What could it be, Mr. Monkey? What could it be? Step three, Tim. We have to give Mr. Monkey time to answer. Oh, that's right. Sorry for being impatient, Mr. Monkey. To find out what left the banana peels, all we need to do is follow the trail. It's, it's an, an elephant. elephant. That's my basket of bananas, Mr. Elephant. Shoo, shoo! There's still quite a lot of bananas left in the basket. Thank you for helping me solve the mystery and find my bananas. You're welcome, Mr. Totem Head. We found Mr. Totem Head's bananas by asking the right questions, Paula. That's right, Billy, which means we have successfully completed our mission and we did it with your help at home. Today, we solved a mystery by asking the right questions. We also learned how to ask questions properly. And Mr. Totem Head rewarded us with these banana cookies. <laughs> Yummy! So, who gets to eat the cookies, Paula? All of us, of course, Billy. When should we eat them? Let's eat them right now. And what should we eat them with? Um... With some milk? <laughs> that sounds good, Billy. 
Do join us on our next adventure! Hello everyone, I am Paula, and these are my friends Chucky and Billy. Hello! And my friends Tim and Calc. Hi everybody! We're learning how to do a special chicken dance today. Show us the dance again, Paula. All right, play it again, Calc. One, two, three, flap your wings. Four, five, six, water like this. Seven and eight, nine and ten. That's great, clap your hands. Wow, Paula, you're really good at it. There's nothing to it, Billy. Let's try it together. Ready, everybody? One, two, three, flap your wings. Four, five, six, one like this. Seven and eight, nine and ten. That's great, clap your hands. Nice job, everybody. That special chicken dance sure was fun, Paula. Yeah. Do you have any more animal dances, Paula? No, Tim. That's the only one I know. Hmm. I wonder what other animal movements there are. That would be fun to find out, Billy. Oh, I know. We could ask Mr. Farmer if we can watch how the animals on the farm move. There are a lot of animals there. That's a great idea, Tim. Let's go to the farm. there, children. What brings you to my farm on this lovely day? We want to find out how to move like animals. Can we have a look around your farm, Mr. Farmer? Move like animals, eh? Sure. Perhaps you'd like to start with the rabbit pen over there. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. Let's go, everybody. These rabbits are so cute and fluffy. Yes, Billy. Let's count how many fluffy rabbits there are. One, two, three, four, five. Five cute fluffy rabbits. Look how the rabbits are moving. They're hopping around. Let's all hop like rabbits. Great idea, Tim. To hop like the rabbits, let's put our arms up like this and squat. Ready? One, Two, three, hop, 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 hop. Good job, everybody. Hop, hop, hop. Look, guys, there are horses over there. Let's go have a look. Okay, Tim, let's hop over to the horses. You can join in too. Ready? Let's go. Hop, 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 hop. hop. Oh, hello, Mirabelle. Hi, Mirabelle. Look, she has one, two other friends. It looks like they are crawling. They're not crawling, Tim. They're galloping. Galloping? Yes, Billy. That's how horses move. Would you like to gallop like the horses? Let's do it. Put your arms out like this. Then put one foot in front of the other like this. Perfect. Next, leap the foot in front forward while the other foot follows quickly like this. Remember to always keep one foot in front. Good job, everybody. <laughs> so what did we learn? We did a special chicken dance and we moved like a chicken. Now we're at the farm to learn how other animals move. We watched rabbits hopping, and after that, we went to the horses. Do you know how a horse moves? Does it move like this? 
Or does it move like this? That's right, a horse gallops like this. That was fun. It sure was, Billy. Do you guys hear that? It sounds like chirping. Yes, it seems to be coming from over there. Let's go check it out. Look, Paula, ducklings. There are so many of them. Yes, Billy. Let's all count them together. One, two, three, three four, five, six. six. There are six ducklings. I thought I heard. Oh, what are you little critters doing here? We found these ducklings walking around in circles, Mr. Farmer. <laughs> they look funny. Hmm, it seems that they are missing their mother. Oh, no. Mr. Farmer, we can help them look for their mother. Well, she must be at the pond, which is in that direction. How are we going to bring these ducklings to their mother? Simple. Look there. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working, Tim. Go there. Over there. Hmm. You're right, Billy. Ducklings are used to following a larger grown-up duck. Now that their mother is not here, they have no grown-up duck to follow. Maybe if we move like a duck, the ducklings will follow us. Good idea, Paula. They might think we're bigger ducks and follow us back to their mother. That might work, children. All you have to do is waddle. What's a waddle, Mr. Farmer? Why, it's how ducks move. I'm not sure how to waddle. No worries. I'll show you. This is how you waddle like a duck. Step one, bend your arms at your side. Step two, take small steps. Step three, swing your body from side to side. That's it. This is how you waddle like a duck. Come on, everyone. Let's waddle like a duck. Are you ready? Step one, bend your arms at your side. Like this, Paula? Yes, Billy. Step two, take small steps. Great job, everybody. And step three, swing your body from side to side. Wow, Chucky, you're a natural at this. All right, let's head for the pond there. It's working, Paula. Maybe we should all quack like ducks. Oh, yes, Billy. Come on, everybody. Let's quack. Quack, 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 quack. Come on, little ducklings. There's your mother. Yay! We did it! Woohoo! Look how happy they look. Wonderful. Thanks for your help, children. We learned how to move like different animals, Paula. That's right, Billy. Which means we have successfully completed our mission. And we did it with your help at home. We had fun at Mr. Farmer's farm today. And we learned many different animal movements. We hopped like a rabbit. And we also learned how to gallop like a horse. And we helped some baby ducklings return to their mother by waddling. I like waddling. Hey, Paula, let's do a duck dance instead. Everybody ready? One, two, three, flap your wings. Four, five, six, we'll go like this. Seven and eight, nine and ten. That's great. Clap your hands. Do join us on our next adventure. Hi, everyone. I am Paula, and these are my friends, Chucky and Billy. Hello. And my friends, Tim and Calc. Hi, everybody. 
We're building a marble set. All we need to do is to fit in these one, two, three pieces. Now where does this piece go? <laughs> I think here, Paula. Great job, Billy and Calc. That piece goes there, just like the instructions say. All right, two pieces left. According to the instructions, that piece should go here, Tim. We don't always have to follow the instructions, Billy. Now let's put this one here. Ta-da! I think this looks better. Thanks, Calc. Here we go. What? <gasps> oh, no! Oh, dear. Was that supposed to happen? The marbles were supposed to reach the end of the marble set. I think Tim should have followed the instructions. I guess you're right, Paula. Hey, where did all the marbles go? We've lost all the marbles. Now we can't play with our marble set anymore. That's it, Chucky. The desert. Mr. Merchant is sure to have marbles he can sell to us. Let's go to the desert! <laughs> I wonder where Mr. Merchant could be. I know <gasps> where Mr. Merchant is. Uncle Sphinx? To find Mr. Merchant, walk past five palm trees in this street, then turn right. Walk past five palm trees, turn right. Got it. Thanks, Uncle. Sphinx? Uncle Sphinx is gone already. But he gave us very clear instructions to find Mr. Merchant. That's right. Five palm trees turn right. Let's go. One, two, three. Where are you going, Cal? Maybe Cal thinks that's Mr. Merchant's stall. Mr. Merchant's stall, but Uncle Sphinx didn't tell us to go there. There you are, Calc. You should not take this route, Calc. You could get lost. It's safer if we follow the instructions Uncle Sphinx gave us. We're at the desert to buy some marbles from Mr. Merchant, and Uncle Sphinx gave us clear instructions to find him. Calc thought he saw Mr. Merchant stall along the way, but I wasn't too sure. Do you know what we should do? Should we follow the instructions from a grown-up we trust? Or should we try something different? That's right! It's safer to follow the instructions from a grown-up we trust. Okay, everyone. Where did we stop counting? This was palm tree number three. Let's go! Four and five. Uncle Sphinx says we should turn right now. Hi, Hi Mr. Mr. Merchant. Merchant. Great to see you, children. What can I do for you? We lost all our marbles, Mr. Merchant, and we were wondering if we could buy some from you. Hmm, tell you what. If you children help me test out these sandboards here, I'll give you some marbles free of charge. Well, really? That sounds great. How do they work? Well, it's very simple. Come, follow me. All right, all you have to do is stand on the sandboard and use one leg to kick yourself off. Then you slide down like this. Whee! Cool! I can't wait to try it! 
How many sandboards do we need? There are five of us. And there are one, two, three, four sandboards. Then we're missing one sandboard. That's right! Chucky doesn't need a sandboard, so four boards is enough. Woohoo! Let's go! What's the matter, Billy? Um, I'm not sure if we should stand on the sandboards. Why do you think that, Billy? Well, if we stand on the sandboard, we might lose our balance and fall. Maybe it's safer if we sit instead. What a great idea, Billy. You should let Mr. Merchant know. I... I don't know, Paula. Mr. Merchant told us to stand on the board instead. Those were his instructions. There's nothing wrong with questioning an instruction, Billy. Oh, but I'm not sure how to. This is how you question an instruction. Step one, try to think of a better way. Step two, share your idea with a grown-up. Step three, find the best solution together. That's it. This is how you question an instruction. Let's follow Paula's steps to question Mr. Merchant's instructions. Ready? Step one, try to think of a better way. I think it would be better if we sit down on the sandboard. It might be safer. Great. Step two. Share your idea with a grown-up. That would be Mr. Merchant, Billy. Uh, okay. Mr. Merchant, I think it would be better if everyone sits on the sandboard instead of standing on it. Hmm, I was told that it would be better to stand on the sandboard. Oh, okay. Remember, Billy, step three. Find the best solution together. Oh, yeah. Um, Mr. Merchant, we would be able to balance better if we sit. I think it'll be safer for kids like us. Hmm, you have a point there. Okay, little furry one, let's try it your way. You children ready to go down the sand dune? Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Merchant. Now hold on tightly to the handles. Ready? Go! Whee! Woohoo! Whee! How was it, children? It was very fun, Mr. Merchant, and safe thanks to Billy. There you go, furry one, for helping me test out these sandboards. We've got marbles from Mr. Merchant, Paula. That's right, Billy, which means we have successfully completed our mission, and we did it with your help at home. We had so much fun sandboarding in the desert today. Yeah, and we learned that following instructions is important. But sometimes it's okay to question instructions given to us. That's right, Billy. And we have new marbles to play with. There. It looks much better now that I follow the instructions. Let's give it a try. It's working. Yay! Hooray! Do join us on our next adventure! Hi, everyone. I am Paula, and these are my friends Chucky and Billy. Hello. And my friends Tim and Calc. Hi, everyone. Oh, oh dear. Oh! I'll never be able to get this car tower done. Now, now, Tim. It's too early to give up. Why don't we take a break with a nice, cool drink? Okay, I guess. Hmm. Let's see. I have a recipe book right here. Aha! 
This is a recipe for simple honey lemonade. There are only a few ingredients. Water, lemons, and honey. We'll need one, two, three, three lemons for this recipe. Let's find the ingredients right now. Hmm, but where can we find them? Oh, what is this? It's a postcard from the big garden. Look, there are lemon trees. We can find our ingredients at the big garden. <laughs> Mr. Garden Gnome. Hello, children. What can I do for you? Mr. Garden Gnome, can you help us find the ingredients for a simple honey lemonade? Of course. What ingredients do you need? We need water, three lemons, and honey. Well, well, well. You can pick three lemons for yourself at the lemon orchard. If you bring me another three lemons, I'll give you a pot of honey. That means you will need to pick six lemons in total. Sure thing, Mr. Garden Gnome. Not so fast, Tim. Some lemons are not ripe yet, which means they are too young. Lemons that are unripe are green, so make sure you only pick the yellow ones. Okay, here I go. So that's three ripe lemons for Mr. Garden Gnome and three ripe lemons for us, which makes six ripe lemons in total. Look what I have, guys. One, two, three. I already found three lemons. I can't wait to make the lemonade. But Tim, those lemons are green, which means that they are not ripe yet. We should take our time to find ripe lemons. Look, Paula, there are some yellow lemons here. Yellow means they are ripe, right? That's right, Billy. Good job. Mine are ripe, too. Oh, yeah. These lemons are green. Finding six ripe lemons is going to take too long. It's so hard. Just be patient, Tim. It's too early to give up. We can find and count the lemons together. Look, one, two, three. Three ripe lemons. We can look for more trees with yellow lemons, Tim. Green, green, all green. These trees only have green lemons. We just have to take our time and look harder, Tim. Let's walk a bit further. Wow, there are a lot of trees with yellow lemons here. We just need three more. Okay. One, two, three. Three yellow lemons. Well done, Tim and Calc. Now let's all count the lemons together. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, six. six. We did it. Now, let's bring the lemons to Mr. Garden Gnome. So what did we learn? We went to the big garden to find ingredients for making simple honey lemonade. We needed three ripe lemons for ourselves and three ripe lemons for Mr. Garden Gnome. But I only found green lemons. Do you know what we should do now? Should we get upset and give up? Or should we be patient and try again? That's right. We should be patient and try again. When you want something, never give up. Here you go, Mr. Garden Gnome. Three ripe lemons. Thank you. What beautiful yellow lemons. As I promised earlier, here's a pot of honey. Now we can make our simple honey lemonade. Yay! Hooray! First, 
We need to squeeze lemon juice into the water. Then we can mix in three spoonfuls of honey. Sounds simple. Oh, it's not working. But we won't give up. Calc, you try it. <gasps> oh, dear. Let's be patient, everybody. I think we first need to find out the proper way to squeeze juice out of the lemons. Perhaps we can ask Mr. Garden Gnome? Somebody called me. Mr. Garden Gnome, can you please tell us how to squeeze juice out of a lemon? Sure thing. This is how you squeeze juice out of a lemon. Step one. Ask a grown-up to help you cut the lemons into halves. Step two. Be patient as you squeeze the lemon halves slowly. Step three. Help your friends when they get tired. That's it. This is how you squeeze juice out of a lemon. So first is step one. Mr. Garden Gnome, will you help us cut the lemons into halves? Sure thing. Have one of my lemons, by the way. Thanks, Mr. Garden Gnome. Okay, step two. Now we have to squeeze the lemons slowly. We also have to be patient, Tim. That's right, Billy. Step two, be patient. But I'm getting a bit tired. Could you take over, please? Of course I can, Tim. Step three, help your friends when they get tired. Let's all help. Now it's time to add in three spoonfuls of honey. Let's count all the spoonfuls together. One, two, three! We did it! Now we have our simple honey lemonade to drink. Wait just a little longer. I can make your lemonade even more delicious. Wow! Now that your lemonade is ice cold, it will be even more refreshing. Mr. Garden Gnome. We have our ice-cold, simple honey lemonade, Paula. That's right, Billy. Which means we have successfully completed our mission. And we did it with your help at home. Today, we made some ice-cold, simple honey lemonade. Along the way, we learned to not give up. We should be patient and try again. We can also always ask for help when we can't do something. So, Tim, are you going to continue building your card tower? Yes. Even if it collapses again, I will keep trying and I won't give up. But I think it'll be more fun if we do it together. Will you guys help me? Of course, Tim. But first, let's enjoy our ice-cold, simple honey lemonade. Mmm, that's delicious. Do join us on our next adventure. Hi, everyone. I am Paula, and these are my friends Chucky and Billy. Oh, Hello. Is everything okay, Billy? I can't find my toy gold crown, Paula. I always put it in this box. Hi, everybody. Hi, Tim. Hi, Calc. Um, Tim, did you play with my toy gold crown yesterday? I can't seem to find it. The one with the red ruby? Yeah, I played with it, but I forgot where I put it. But the Toy crown should always go into this box. That's where it belongs. You think it belongs there, Billy. I think it doesn't matter where I put it. But, but... It's all right, Billy. We can look for your gold crown together. Let's think of different places where it could be. 
place one under the bed. Okay, then how about place two inside the blue dresser? It's not in here. Hmm. Place three, the book. <gasps> oh, there it is. It's in the bookshelf. <gasps> oh, no. The red ruby. It's okay, Chalky. You were just trying to help. I'm sorry, Billy. I should have put it somewhere safer. That's it, Chalky. Billy, maybe we can find a new ruby for your crown on Treasure Island. Okay, Tim. That would be nice. What a wonderful plan. Let's go to Treasure Island. <laughs> Captain Redbeard over there, digging for treasure? Maybe he has a red ruby. Let's ask him. Hello, Captain Redbeard. Do you have a red ruby to spare? The ruby on my crown broke, so we're trying to find a new one. Well, maybe I have a red ruby, and maybe I'll give it to you, if you help me find my treasure. Okay, we'll be glad to help. It seems that you've dug a lot of holes, Captain Redbeard. Why don't we count all the holes Captain Redbeard has dug together? One, One two, two, three, three four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine. nine. Nine holes. Wow, that is a lot of holes, Captain Redbeard. Yes, but... Yar! I still can't find my treasure. Here, I haven't dug this spot yet. The shovels are over there. Now start digging. Let's dig, everybody. Here we go. No, no, no. What's wrong, Captain Redbeard? That's not how you're supposed to shovel. You have to do it like this. This is not the right way of shoveling? Ah, no! You have to do it my way. Tim's way of shoveling looks fine, Captain Redbeard. Even Chalky's way seems to work. Yeah, everybody digs in their own way, but it all works. That's right, Captain Redbeard. As long as it's not dangerous, it's better if you accept that everyone does things differently. Ah, fine. So what did we learn? We went to Treasure Island to help Billy find a new red ruby for his toy crown. Captain Redbeard will give us one if we help him dig for treasure. But Redbeard wants us to dig in his special way. Do you know what we should do now? Should we accept each other's way of doing things differently? Or should we do things only in someone's special way? That's right! As long as it's not dangerous, we should let others do things the way they like to. Did you hear that? What's that? Is it my treasure? Get out of my way! Ah! There it is! Maybe we should dig a bit more, Captain Redbeard? That's a good idea, Billy. I think... Hmm... Five shovels of sand should be enough. Let's count as we shovel together. One, two, two three, four, five. Hooray! Hooray! That's my treasure chest indeed, mateys. Mr. Bunny, oh, how I missed you. I couldn't sleep without you. A stuffed bunny? 
captured Redbeard sleeps with a stuffed bunny. <laughs> stuffed bunny, stuffed bunny, squawk. I, I, I'm not going to give you your red ruby anymore. Tim, laughing at Captain Redbeard for being different isn't very nice. Oh, I think you've hurt his feelings. Maybe you should accept his differences. How do I do that? This is how you accept each other's differences. Step one, understand that everybody is different. Step two, think how you would like to be treated for being different. Step three, treat others that same way for being different. That's it. I think that's what you can do to accept each other's differences. Step one. Tim, don't you like to take a bath with a rubber duck? Yeah, I... I do. And Chalky can't sleep without a small light on. I really prefer to put away my toy gold crown in the toy box. I see. Step one. Understand that everybody is different in our own special way. That's right, Tim. Now step two. How would you like to be treated for taking a bath with a rubber duck? Hmm, well, I wouldn't want others to make fun of me, like I did with Captain Redbeard. I just want others to let me be for who I am. All right, step three. Treat others that same way for being different. You're doing great, Tim. I'm sorry for laughing at you, Captain Redbeard. I know better now. Everyone is different, and I should accept that. Um, fine. Apology accepted. But I won't give you a red ruby anymore, because I never had one to begin with. Aww. Quack. Red ruby, red ruby. This is not a ruby. It's a big red seashell. It's so pretty. Do you think it will fit on your crown, Billy? I'm sure it will, Tim. Look, Paula, we found a beautiful red seashell to put on my toy gold crown. That's right, Billy, which means we have successfully completed our mission. And we did it with your help at home. Today, we had a lot of fun doing things in our own way. And we shouldn't laugh at people when they do things differently. My new toy crown is finished. Do you want to play with it now? No, that's okay, Tim. I'd like to play with the building blocks now. Then let me put it away for you, Billy. There, inside the toy box, just how you like it. Thanks, Tim. Do join us on our next adventure.